Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about general care, routine, and tips for breeding mealworms. This will basically cover all the nitty gritty details, whys, and hows that I normally wouldn't cover in one of my breeding guides in order to save time. More or less, this is going to be more in depth on the routine that I touched on in the first video in the series, and if you haven't seen it, that's a good place to start. Link in the card above. But first, I want to mention I have an Amazon storefront with items I suggest for the hobby on the page. Second, I also have an eBay store. Right now, I only have a few items up. About I'll add more to the store as my project grows. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. First, we need to get our bin set up. We need to add about two to three inches of substrate. I typically go for about two inches. We add a healthy amount of beetles. You actually want a bit of crowding. This will help them flip each other back over. When in small numbers, if beetles flip themselves over, and it's often, they will get stuck and they could end up dying. When their numbers are dense, beetles are more likely to crawl by, allowing them to grab onto them and turn themselves back over. Too many beetles, obviously, can be an issue. I don't know an exact ratio to try to go for, but I use a one square foot bin and I put about 1,000 beetles in each one of them and that seems to work out fine for me. There seems to be enough space and their tendency to group together makes it look more cramped than it actually is. Once we have the beetles settled, it is entirely up to you whether or not you add cardboard like toilet paper or paper towel rolls cut in half but it can increase the surface area and possibly allow for more beetles. I suggest feeding moist food every two to three days and only add enough for them to eat that day. You want nothing left over. Your veggies can be shaved carrots, potato slices, lettuce, collard greens, kale, and most other leafy greens. This is mostly to provide moisture. So we want veggies with a lot of moisture that dry out instead of molding in case it does not all get eaten. You can technically do fruit. However, you are more likely to attract fruit flies and grow mold than provide extra benefit to the larva or the beetles. Now we need to pick our day to base our week on. I personally do Monday. So Monday is setup, harvest, and feed day. I start with the beetle bins. I set two empty bins aside and take the beetle bin and pour it through a sifter over one of the empty bins. This catches all of the beetles and any large food particles and separates them from the substrate. The substrate is where all of the eggs are. Now we take the other empty bin, pour our substrate in, and put our beetles in their new enclosure and give them some food. We now want to set aside the bin we originally used for our beetles to allow for any eggs that were laid on the bottom of the bin to hatch. Mealworm eggs typically take between 7 to 10 days if your temperatures are fairly warm. This aligns almost perfectly with our weekly schedule. By the time you do your next harvest, check your previously used beetle bin and you will see hundreds of mealworms that would have been crawling around in your substrate, potentially destroying or damaging egg clusters as they seek after moisture. Take these larvae and place them with last week's collection. Now this bin is ready to be reused as an enclosure for your beetle colony. So my rule of thumb is, two bins for every one colony. This rotation should increase your production as you are eliminating two problems. The first, not having harvested all of your worms. The second, reducing potential damage to eggs. If you follow my logic, there should be an increase to yield as you will have next to no crossover between collections. Now, if you have another beetle bin, repeat these steps. If not, move to the next step. Now we tend to our larva. Much like the beetles, we feed them every two to three days depending on how you choose to do it. I prefer to use more nutritious food for the larva than beetles so shaved carrots, kale, and collard greens are good choices. For freshly harvested mealworms, my go-to way to provide moisture for them, and remember veggies are mostly for moisture, is to lightly mist the substrate. I touched on this in a previous video, but in case you have not watched it, the entire idea to help mealworms grow is to provide them with lots of food and lots of water. If you do not keep a lid on your enclosures, I personally do not, if you do, you can skip this part, but I give my microworms a misting every day to allow for as many of them as possible to get as much water as they need for them to grow. This in a way force feeds mealworms. There's no need to worry about mold as long as you do not overdo it and I mean don't make puddles in your substrate guys. The water will evaporate or be consumed by the mealworms within a few hours leaving no moisture behind. Until the larvae get large enough to start consuming things like shaved carrots or lettuce I find this to be the best method of providing moisture to microworms. Again if you feel uncomfortable with this step you can skip it. I personally do this and I have no issues. Just do not cover your closures up if you do. Between misting daily and feeding every two to three days, your mealworm should grow at a steady pace. It will take them about two to three months to mature into adults and start the cycle anew. Tend to your larva regularly and you will have great success. Now, once we get to pupa, we run into a dilemma. If you watch my previous video where I cover tools, I highly suggest a pupa sifter. I use this tool every day when bins start producing pupa. Your option without the sifter is to pick them out yourself. When in small numbers, it's not that bad. However, it will quickly get out 
of hand. It will also cause you to work twice as much. But with this tool, I place it in a standard 5 gallon bucket and pour my substrate through. It effortlessly catches nearly 100% of the pupa. Those that pass through are unusually small. They can still be manually picked out, but that is up to you. I take each collection of pupa and place them in a bin. I repeat this every day, adding to the bin until the bin starts producing beetles. Once the first beetle appears, I start a new bin for the pupa and repeat the process for roughly another month. You basically want one bin producing beetles and one bin growing beetles. Once all the pupa have hatched in the beetles, dump the sheds and dead pupa out and set the bin aside to be reused when another bin starts producing. Now we have to deal with the beetles. I haven't figured out a super effective way to deal with these guys. I typically spend 30 minutes to an hour a day when I'm producing beetles, plucking them out one by one. It will keep you busy and it is very tedious. The only thing I can think of is placing the pupa on top of something and letting the beetles walk off. This will not clear 100% of the beetles from the top, but it will remove some of them, and any help would be great help. I have not implemented this part into my system yet, as the time spent for me is not a big deal yet. I'm sure at some point it's going to force me to figure out a lazy way. I think something with an angled surface to allow the beetles to climb up and fall off the edge would work, and a slanted surface should keep all the pupa together, but I have not tested it anyways. We have to get the beetles that hatch away from the pupa so they don't potentially bite them after they regain their strength, potentially killing the pupa. It is nowhere near as common with beetles harming pupa, but it is still possible and I am cautious with everything I do. You want to make fresh colonies every two pupa bins. This will depend on your yield, but if you produce enough pupa to make five colonies of beetles, you want to make those five colonies. Let's do an example real fast. If we harvest in January, at the third week of the month, you should start getting beetles. We start our next bin as soon as the first beetle hatches. In February, we collect until that bin starts producing. January and February's beetles should go together to form colonies. In March, the third set of collections, we start the process over. The reason behind this is that we want our colonies to live a predictable amount of time and leave us with the least amount of work as possible. So, my goal is to make colonies that will live and mostly die out by month six. I will take those that survive and remove them from the dead versus removing the dead from the living. The dead still serve a purpose and that is allowing the beetles to flip themselves back over. I have found this to be the easiest and least time consuming method for dealing with the dead. If you go the route of constantly adding beetles to one colony, you will get to the point where you are pulling dead out regularly versus dealing with it every few months. These guys die for random reasons. Some die within a week or two of becoming beetles and others will live six months. It's just part of mealworms. I understand this is a whole lot more information than I normally provide, but this time I really really wanted to go in depth in this series. You do not have to follow every one of these steps exactly, and you may find a better way to do it yourself. This is just what I suggest and what I'm aiming to do, and I tried to explain my reasoning behind it. If you see any issues with this method, please comment and tell me how I could improve. I have bred mealworms off and on for a few years now, so I am no expert. This is just how my mind works and how I ideally want to do things, and I'm slowly getting there. If you haven't already, check out the earlier videos in this series where I talk about the types of setups you can breed these guys in and the tools you use to do it. Both are separate short videos. And that about does it. If you like this video and have it in your critter loving heart, give this video a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future like this. And as always, from the critters and I, have a wonderful day.